Hi everyone, this is my first wrap up. Um, January turned out to be a really good month for me. I'm usually not one that's going to read a lot of books in a month, mainly because reading isn't my main, like, um, maybe not my main, it's not the only thing that I spend most of my time doing in, in my free time, if that makes sense. I also game and watch movies, but mostly I spend time gaming and reading books, and that's what I've been focusing on lately. Um, and I'm also one that if it takes me a while for one book to fully engage with it, I'm totally fine with it. I don't have a quota for how much I want to read or how many pages I want to read or anything like that. So sometimes my wrap-ups will be like two books and I'll be fine with it. But this uh, month I have eight books to show you and the first book that I read was Baby Bjornstrand. This is a graphic novel. It was in my haul, my graphic novel haul. Um, this is by Renee French. It is kind of, it's hard to explain. It's basically about um, three or four of little, little creatures like this and they live near the sea and one day a weird looking creature comes out of the ocean and the creature doesn't say anything and it's basically it's very minimal like the artwork is minimal and there isn't writing on every page and generally it's just it's minimal but it is pretty great and kind of creepy and eerie so yeah I liked it I mean it's nothing to write home about um, if I had gotten this out at the library or something, I wouldn't go out and buy it, but it is pretty great. Um, I have a problem with, like, the Goodreads rating system. To me, out of five stars is a little bit too hard, especially since at Goodreads, I don't know if, I just don't know how to do it. I would imagine I, I just don't know how to do it, but you can't give half stars. Um, and I'm pretty sure, like, most of these books I would give four stars on Goodreads, but they're drastically different for me, um, rating-wise. But I would give this seven, seven and a half stars. The next book I read, I think, was... This is In the Woods by Tana French. Um, this is a thriller, kind of crime mystery thriller, Then I think this was done really well in that about halfway or a quarter through the book to me, this book became about something completely different, not the the case in the book, which I thought was really clever, and I thought Tana French does it really well, and sometimes it's not done so well, but, um, yeah, it sounds, it sounds a little bit better than it is, to be honest. Um, it follows two detectives, one is named Cassie and one is named Adam Ryan, I think, and Adam has to go back to his hometown where he was originally part of a case where some of his friends disappeared and they never found their bodies and I don't know. It's it, it's actually really creepy but yeah, <laughs> I'm bad at synopses. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I would I would recommend it. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to go in order. Uh, the next thing that I read was The Tale, the Tale of Bryn Brent and Mino Marylebone. Ma Marylebone? Ma I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, uh, I kind of went into this in my haul. It's a graphic novel about, it's also really creepy, about, um, two characters, Bryn and Brent, that kind of guard this pool of shady, nasty, weird stuff. And a little innocent girl gets involved and she changes a few things and yeah, it's it's a good read. I'd recommend it. <coughs> uh, I'd probably give it mm, 7 out of 10 stars. 7 out of 10. Not stars. I don't know. I need to get used to these type of videos. Um, 
what's next okay the next book I read was Kurt Vonnegut's Dead-Eyed Dick I really liked this um but it's Kurt Vonnegut so of course I'm really gonna like it Kurt Vonnegut's a genius to me and I think this is him at I wouldn't say it's definitely not at his best but you can tell this is later in his career because he's got the mechanics and the the timing and the structure of what he wants to do completely down like this is not the most interesting story he's wrote he's wrote <laughs> this is not the most interesting story he's written um the plot isn't as engaging <laughs> the plot isn't as engaging as something like slaughterhouse five or cat's cradle or galapagos but um you could really just tell he's he's got he's like phoning it in at this point like he doesn't really even have to think about it he just knows what he needs to do this is a book that it's non it's a non-linear narrative but you wouldn't be able to tell because he does it so well so um i would definitely recommend this i would give this eight eight and a half out of ten then I read this, which was a complete surprise. I had it sitting on my shelf. I didn't know anything about it, and I decided to go into it completely blind and not read the back. This is Bor Borges. Jesus Christ. I almost said Borges. Borges and the Eternal Orangutans. Um, this is kind of a weird little novel. It is about uh, a mystery that takes place at an Edgar Allan Poe convention and the people trying to solve the mystery are Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe experts um, and one of those experts is Jorge Luis Borges um, and it is kind of weird in that um, yeah that the author chose a real person, another author, who was dead at this point when he wrote this, I'm pretty sure. Maybe he wasn't? I don't know. The author <laughs> wrote, yeah he definitely was, the author wrote um, a character for him and he even, the end gets a little bit shaky to me with Borges as a character but regardless it's um it's very hard to explain it really is very hard to explain basically if you're a bibliophile if you especially if you like Edgar Allan Poe and mystery you need to read this it's easy as that um this is for book lovers because um the way that they examine the mystery because it takes place at an Edgar Allan Poe um conference is completely through literary illusion and just philosophy and craziness. I would definitely recommend this. I would give it an 8 out of 10. Then, um, let me do this one. This is Too Cool, Too Cool, Too Cool to Be Forgotten by Alex Robinson. Robinson. I don't know why I have trouble saying that. Um, this, I mean, I'm going to be brief. I didn't really like it. It's It reads like a PSA to me, or like an after-school special. I thought there was going to be so much more in this, but there really wasn't. It's about a dude that goes to... He wants to quit smoking, so he goes to a hypnotist, and the hypnotist ends up like doing something to him where he is transported back to when he was in high school. And... What happens is what you would expect to happen in like a 90s a 90s after school special. There's not a whole lot. The last book I read this month um, is Gloria Naylor's Mama Day. I actually didn't finish it in January. Um, I finished it two days ago so it, it was a good book to bring me into February Black History Month where I imagine, although I'm not 100% sure, but I imagine I will be reading mostly black authors. Um, but this was great. I mean, it was weird. It was kind of creepy. It was wholesome. It was 
a lot of different things. Gloria Naylor, this is my first Gloria Naylor and I think she killed it with this. I mean, this is a story of a the Day family, um, a black family of mostly women. Well, I think women are the only ones that are left who reside on an island that is off the coast of Georgia but is not part of America, which I think was a very clever setting for this. It was It was a great choice, but um, there are three main narrators. There is Ophelia, what I would call, who I would call the main character in this book, whose name is really, her name is Ophelia, but everybody calls her Coco. And then there's George, her love interest, and then there's kind of a, an omniscient narrator that follows Mama Day, and Mama Day is a kind of, I don't know what to call it, <laughs> a witch doctor? Not really a witch doctor. Um, something like that. And you see that a lot, I feel like, in literature, this, the black woman as some type of, like, voodoo mama juju, like, ridiculous caricature of, you know, the magical negro. And I think in this, that doesn't exist. Because I, I think when you get people complaining about that type of depiction, people are like, well, people like that exist, duh. But, um, there's a way of doing it, like, there's a way of making it basically not some, like, tap dancing mammy, like, drink this herb and you'll have a baby or something like that like there's not there's not this going on in here um Naylor does an amazing job of creating believable characters and I think that's not always support um important but in this um book it is um believable characters that are great some of them are likable, some of them are unlikable. Personally, I did not like George at all in this book. I could not stand him, even though he's a main character. But to me, it is a sign of a good writer that that doesn't really matter. He's still incredibly interesting. All the characters are really interesting. I would say this ties... I don't know. It's between this and The First Bad Man as the best books that I read this month. But yeah, um, that's all I have for this month. I don't do a TBR because I read relatively organically and I don't, I just try to read what I read and then whatever I feel like after that. Like I'm reading an Octavia Butler book now and that's because I wanted to read a black author but I didn't want it um, rooted in realism. I read a lot of realism this um, month. So thank you and all for watching. Thank you to my three subscribers. Three subscribers I know in YouTube land is not a big deal but it's a big deal to me so thank you to all of you and I will see you in a few days. Bye!